Good afternoon, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. False flag event coming. Uh, it is uh, information we have gotten in this evening is startling. And most of what we're going to be speaking about tonight will not be able to air on Israeli News Live on YouTube. You will have to go to Brand New Tube to be able to see this broadcast in its entirety. Uh, Patreon as well. Um, and uh, probably iConnect will have a version of this on there, uh, on our backup channel there. Fact News Network, we cannot air it there, nor can we air this on Israeli News Live YouTube in its entirety. I am going to give you a little idea, though, what we're going to be going into. Now, just for Israeli News Live, the screenshots that I have up, I can share there. This is from the Russian uh, news, Commerçant.ru, going to be talking about how the Turkey was planning in advance during their war games for the attack against Armenia. But we are also going to be sharing with you disturbing images that cannot be shared that have, and have not been shared publicly that I am aware of anywhere uh, where the Turkish military is beheading Christians in Armenia. I actually have photographic evidence. It has been uh, kind of covered a little bit, so it's not too gruesome, but you will see that information. Another major breaking story we'll be talking about tonight, the troubles between Netanyahu and Trump. Major trouble underway going on between those two camps there, something that has hurt Jared Kushner uh, very bad in the relationships with Israel. We'll be getting into that. Uh, we'll also be talking about, and this, of course, will be over on Patreon or brand new tube, Israeli News Live. Definitely, you'll be able to click the link below in the description. Otherwise, you won't see it. Other people are copying our material. All right. I connect also FX. I connect FX. You'll see part of this video there, but you will not see the entirety of everything. And... Um, and you definitely will not be seeing some of the information that I have to be able to share because of the risk of our us getting that third strike. So I am asking you, be sure to subscribe. Fact News Network, I don't air this there either, but you can always get a lot of this news uh, from Fact News Network on YouTube. But be sure, brand new tube, Israeli News Live, iConnectFX.com, Israeli News Live. All the links will be below. Our app, Israeli News Live. Uh, don't forget, you can, you can catch us on the app, uh, either Android or whatever. But uh, let me first go into some of the news here with you guys here on Israeli News Live that you can hear about. But these other things, the false flag events, uh, the, the Israelis backing the Saudis, uh, defeating Yemen suffering major losses there, and, the, and uh, of course the rift between Trump and Netanyahu will be discussing on the other channels there. Let's go into this right now, though. According to Commerçant.ru, forcing conflict, uh, sources of Commerçant told how Turkey was preparing the ground for ag aggravation in uh, Nagarano, Karbaka. Says here, the military diplomatic sources of the Commerçant assert that the current ser serious aggravation of conflict over uh, Nagarano Karbaka was deliberately planned and provoked by Turkey, according to them, over the past months. Ankara has actively provoked Baku to unleash hostilities under the promise of comprehensive political, diplomatic intelligence, and military technical support. Earlier, the U.S. and French authorities spoke about Turkey's direct intervention in the conflict over. Nagarano uh, Kabak. Um, the picture of that, uh, excuse me, that the Commerçant military diplomatic sources paint is as follows. After the completion of the next Turkish Azerbaijani exercises in July through August, a significant group of Turkish armed forces allegedly remained on the territory of Azerbaijan, which was called upon to play uh, a coordinating and directing the role in planning and conducting an offensive operation in Nagarano uh, Karbaka. Uh, we are talking about 600 military personnel, 200 uh, tactical, 200 tactical, 50 instructors, uh, 120 f uh, flight personnel, 20 drone operators at Dollar Airfield, and 50 instructors at Yavlaka. Now it's interesting they bring up the drone operators because in another post here we have. Let me see, not that one there, I believe. No, not that one. Let's see. Yeah, right here. Russian air defense systems have been overwhelmed by Turkish drones in Syria, Libya, and now Azerbaijan. 
We can say that Turkey's ha Turkey has proven that the use of unmanned military technology in a conventional war has begun, and Turkey is playing the leading role. Uh, and that's exactly what's going on there. So they're using that upper hand. But not only is Turkey involved in this, but also Israel. A lot of people have no idea about that. In fact, there were protests uh, in Israel today. Uh, Armenians were protesting uh, Israel's arming of Azerbaijan. And I uh, got this from a good friend of mine over in Israel. He's an Israeli journalist and said that when the police showed up, an altercation ensued while they were there. And riot, uh, basically a fight broke out there. Uh, the uh, Israeli uh, military was able to stop the fighting that was going on. Doesn't like a gigantic protest, uh, but they did. They were able to protest Israel's involvement in arming uh, the Azerbaijan against Armenia. So that's the Armenian. You know, Armenians are mainly the Christian population inside of Israel. And of course, like I said, they were protesting Israel's involvement in that. Uh, going back to the news here, though, let's quickly look at this here. Uh, this came out uh, today. The Republic of Armenia, uh, Shushan uh, Step Stepan Stepanyan, uh, is the spokesman for the Armenian uh, military, said that Azerbaijan uh, have agreed to a humanitarian truce as of October the 18th at uh, oh, uh, 0, 100 hours. That'll be midnight time, local time. Armenia's MFA said in a statement. We'll have to see whether or not that holds or not. I don't really hold my breath to that holding very well. And then, of course, TASS Russian news agency is, is bringing out uh, that uh, the arms embargo uh, for Iran has been lifted. And as of the 18th of October, which will be tomorrow, the embargo on supplies to Iran, as well as exports from that country of conventional weapons, expired on Sunday. And on this day, exactly five years have passed since the entry into force of the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. So you can imagine there's going to be a lot of military hardware uh, trading hands between Russia and Iran. Um, uh, also, another thing I thought was of interest, this uh, person here, Ali Hayezaid uh, posted with assistance of Bashar al-Assad's regime, militants and weaponry are, are delivered by civilian aircraft from Syria to Armenia. Uh, well, if they are, God bless Bashar al-Assad for doing so. Uh, at least somebody needs to stand up for the Armenians. And of course, he does not provide any proof as to how this is going on or... or um, uh, you know, how do we know for sure this is actually uh, Syria providing military aid to Armenia? But like I said, uh, it would be very interesting. In Russia, I was told, too, that Russia may step in uh, on this conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, but they're kind of allowing Azerbaijan to get the upper hand to kind of force Armenia to come to the negotiating table. But, as I said before, this is a genocide of Christians. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot share the photos here on Israeli News Live, but uh, we, we were sent the photos of the beheading of the Christians there in, uh, uh, by, the Azer, me, by the Turkish military in this conflict. Uh, let's move on here to other issues there as well. Uh, Idlib has become a training oh, ground. Baby. Uh, a training ground, a uh, major training ground for the fighters there. They are really taking advantage of this. Uh, these former al-Nusra, al-Qaeda operatives there uh, are being trained and prepared for more war. Uh, whether or not that is uh, war that they're being used in Libya or Azerbaijan, but nonetheless, they are being heavily trained in Idlib. So Syria has become the training ground for these terrorists uh, because, unfortunately, Bashar al-Assad has not been able to regain his country back uh, for the sake of people. It's really sad. So many terrorists in one part of the world there. Um, uh, moving on as well, Israel. This happened a few days ago. Israel special forces destroyed two Syrian military sites after crossing uh, Syria's border. Uh, said that Israeli special forces crossed in Syria and destroyed two Syrian military outposts in secret operation last month, making news of the operation public yesterday. The Israeli 
operation conducted by special forces units, including the Nahal Brigade and the Combat Engineering Unit of Yahalom, uh, without being detected, was reportedly in retaliation to the Syrian military's violation of the disengagement agreement between the two countries in 1974. As a part of that agreement, the demilitarized zone of the Israeli-Syrian border should only be occupied by the UN Disengagement Observers Force and left alone by both militaries. It was reportedly neglected by Syria, however, when it recently reported its forces in the demilitarized zone on the occupied Golan Heights, resulting in Israel's secret operation. You know, if you remember, I brought this up not too long ago when uh, Syria was going down to take back part of uh, overthrow some of the terrorists that had gained a foothold there, not too far from the Israeli border, that Israel would actually get involved. And sure enough, they did. They got involved in that conflict there and uh, attacked Syrian forces there. So there's two sides of that story. Israel is claiming that, of course, they're you know, that this is being violated, the, the, the agreement of 1974. But at the same time, Israel also is doing this in support of al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, and ISIS forces there that are on the ground trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. So it's only a matter of time. And uh, of course, right now we know that the, the Israel is really heavily involved throughout the entire Middle East there. Uh, this is something that was I picked up as well. Somebody shared this with me on Twitter. Canada going tyr tyrannical, second total lockdown isolation camps for refusers. I, I have not been able to confirm this independently if this is so or not, uh, but I will leave you a link so you can check that out for yourself to see what your thoughts are on that. And I think this too, this is a very interesting excerpt right here. There is a major push on the Republican side for President Trump. They are doing every type of shenanigan they can, and I am not for Biden at all, but they are doing all they can to make uh, Biden, his son, all of them look like the worst of the worst in order to make sure that Trump gets back in the lead. Because right now, Trump is majorly trailing behind uh, uh, Joe Biden in the campaign. And this is something, like I said, I got information on the intel side about this tonight. Uh, they're planning a false flag event. Mossad turned down the United States and helping that false flag event. So it's been outsourced. Uh, that's troubling to hear that. Anyway, let me play this little short clip here for you. Uh, this man here, they're talking about sex scandal tapes that, have, that are going to be released on Hunter Biden. Listen to this here. Got the subtitles. Right. What about Hunter Biden? Here we go. Sex tapes. Pedo tapes, one by one, Hunter Biden, okay, now, extremely disturbing and obscene, I'll put the link in there for you, but you know, when I saw this, and of course I've seen the, the clip too about the uh, CIA operative that uh, claims uh, what was done by Obama, Hillary, and Biden, blaming them for the downing of the SEAL team, um, uh, th th this cover-up for, for hiding Osama bin Laden. And I don't doubt these things now. Uh, okay, so don't get me wrong, but, uh, but it's interesting. There's a lot of mudslinging going on right now. There's a lot of power struggle going on. And... Uh, so now I'm being told there's going to be a false flag event that's going to happen. We'll discuss that with you guys over on uh, Brand New Tube uh, as well as Patreon. And uh, But like I said, there's some things here I just cannot share here. Also, I thought this was inter interesting as well. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows walks away from reporters after they asked him to keep his face mask on. But you know... I have to stand up for Mark Meadows on this right here, right? The man even distances himself further for him, for, from him. He's just trying to get a breath of fresh air, which his lungs no doubt needed after being muzzled in there the entire time. But I want you to see this clip here because this is absolutely ridiculous the way he was treated in this case here. Like I said, I'm not for either side, but I'm for common sense on stuff like this. Take a look at this and what happens here. Oh, we're doing it. Yeah, hey, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. 
They want to talk to him for just a moment. So he agrees. I, I tell you what, let me do this. Let me pull this away. Yep, pull away. And then... So he gets back 10 feet, he says, later. Well, I'm more than 10 feet away. I'm not, well, I'm not going to talk to him. I'll be glad to answer your question. Now see, they, they got all bent out of shape over that. But I have to, I, I mean, listen, Mr. Meadows, he, he did the right thing. He backed up in respect for them. Although to me, it's just total garbage what's going on. Um, and, uh, and, and they had a problem with that everything is a political football, right? It's just totally insane. Also, British Columbia man captures a fiery object blazing through the sky, and it wasn't alone. Coming in hot, they say there. Several objects there. Uh, this guy kind of zooms it in there to show it and stuff. And I know there has been quite a few uh, meteorites coming in. My own wife seen one the other day with the kids there right here in Orlando. We've seen a lot of different objects. I didn't share them with you because I was actually going to do a news broadcast. So I just didn't get a chance to pull it all off. But I'll put this one in here. Mr. MBB333 is the guy that actually put this out. Uh, so I thought it was kind of an interesting uh article there. Let me just see what we have up here. Oh, yeah. Also, and China is indeed assisting Saudi Arabia in its nuclear program. That's got to make for some interesting discussions between Beijing and Iran, not to mention Beijing and Israel. You don't have to worry about it because Beijing and Israel are very close allies. And, uh, uh, and of course, they're working together with the Saudis. So, don't be fooled by all this. At any rate, uh, I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that are, uh, of course, those of you that catch this on the other broadcasts, you'll see in the beginning what we, at the beginning of the broadcast, what you missed uh, that we could not air here. Thank you for watching, and thank you for your support of this broadcast as well. IsraeliNewsLive.org, our website. And uh, you can donate either by mail or online either way. We appreciate your help. Should be some changes on our website coming up if we can ever get our web, ma uh, web guy to work with uh, the folks that we have to make the changes there. Uh, I know he's a busy guy, so I was trying to get up with him to make some of these changes for you uh, so that we don't have any issues with YouTube in the future. And then that way you'll be able to see a lot of this information without being censored as well. If you go to our website, Israeli News Live, also you can do no donate online or by mail right there on your right-hand side. Thank you for listening. I'm Stephen Benoon. Good evening.